This next sexually transmitted infection has several phases of progression, each with a unique presentation, and can even affect a developing baby during pregnancy. In this video, we'll be learning about syphilis. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. Welcome to Bite Size Medicine, your go-to channel for short, easy to understand videos about the common medical topics that matter to you. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, get involved in the comments, and check out the description below for links and resources. Let's get started. Although not as common as gonorrhea and chlamydia, syphilis is still one of the eight most common STIs. It is also one of the most interesting because it presents differently based on how long someone has been infected, and it has an extremely important place in medical history that I'll mention at the end of the video. The infection that we call syphilis is caused by a bacterium named Treponema pallidum. It is part of a group called the spirochetes, and one of the characteristics that make this group interesting is that they move in a corkscrew motion. Syphilis is transmitted by direct contact with someone who has syphilitic sores, lesions, and rashes, and contact with their bodily fluids. Syphilis is also one of the STIs that can be transmitted from the infected birth parent through the placenta to a baby during pregnancy. Like other STIs, the most effective method to avoid infection is with abstinence. But if you choose to be sexually active, you can protect yourself using a barrier method, such as male or female condoms. Other birth control methods do not protect against STIs because without a barrier, there is still direct contact. Using a barrier will not be 100% effective though because if the infected person has a sore in their mouth, even kissing could cause transmission. Another option is for both you and your partners to be tested before engaging in any sexual activity to confirm you're not infected. The symptoms of syphilis vary based on its stage. It has four stages in an adult, primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary syphilis. Congenital syphilis occurs in babies during pregnancy. Primary syphilis presents as a lesion called a chancre, usually at the original site of infection. It is a painless, firm, round ulcer. Secondary syphilis occurs when the bacteria have spread throughout the body. This can cause nonspecific symptoms such as fever, chills, headache, night sweats, and weight loss. But there are also specific symptoms, including a rash, typically on the palms of the hands and soles of the feet, smooth, painless, wart-like lesions called condylomata lata around the genitals and anus, enlarged lymph nodes, and hair loss. Latent syphilis is the stage where someone is infected but does not have any symptoms. Tertiary syphilis is the final stage and most severe. It affects several organs. It can cause gummas, which are soft growths of inflamed and dead tissue, aortitis, which is inflammation and destruction of the aorta, the main artery coming from the heart, neurosyphilis, leading to destruction of nerves within the spinal cord, and argyle robertson pupils, where the pupils do not respond when light shines on them. Congenital syphilis can lead to facial abnormalities such as ragades, linear scars at the edge of the mouth, nasal discharge called snuffles, saddle nose where the bridge of the nose is collapsed, abnormal teeth called Hutchinson teeth and mulberry molars, curved bones in the legs called saber shins, and deafness. The symptoms of tertiary syphilis and congenital syphilis may be permanent even after treatment. When syphilis is diagnosed as primary, secondary, or early in the latent stage, treatment is a single injection of penicillin. Once it has become tertiary, then it requires going to the hospital for IV penicillin. Another interesting fact about syphilis is that once treatment begins, the dying bacteria may release toxins and cause flu-like symptoms, including fever, chills, and headache. This is called the jerish herxheimer reaction. Yes, you can be reinfected if you engage in sexual contact with someone who is infected. Unlike other diseases, our immune system does not fight STIs very well by itself and does not make antibodies for future infections. 
The final aspect of syphilis that is crucial to know about is the Tuskegee study. This was a study conducted between 1932 and 1972 that followed a group of African American males in Alabama who were infected with syphilis to see how syphilis progressed. The problem was that the researchers did not receive informed consent from the participants and once penicillin was discovered to be the cure to syphilis, the participants were not treated. I highly recommend you follow the links below to learn more about this study. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, learned something new, have any questions, have a personal experience in this area that you'd like to share, or have ideas for a future video. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for another delicious bite of medicine.